Good evening. Good evening. Blessings on you all. Yes, here we come. Here we come. Getting ready to share a precious nugget from the Lord. Blessings, blessings. Y'all come in. We're coming in at 6.04. Begin to tag and share someone that you think would need this word on this evening. We're just excited that we're able to share, yes, this precious word. Good evening, my sister. You had your rest. My sister Condra coming in. Blessings on you, honey. Yes, the days and the hours, days, hours go so fast. Days just rolling past. This is, oh my God, uh, July 19th. My God, half of the year is gone. So we just made as, uh, might as well, okay, let's get ready to have this as a victory conclusion where we will not accept nothing but victory throughout the rest of this year. We don't care what they say, how they say, all that they have going on. We have uh, the Holy Spirit in our lives and so we're going to keep it rolling in the mighty name of Jesus because time is just passing us by. Yes, it is. So I always say, make the day, yeah, do something productive with your day. Don't just, you know, wake up just because you don't feel good or whatever. Get up out of bed. Don't, don't, don't just lay there. Whatever happened yesterday, you can't fix it, but you can fix the future, okay? So I say to you all, uh, just be thankful every day that you arise, that you're alive, you know, rise up. Okay, Lord, I'm, I'm awakened. So let me make this day productive. Let me do something that's going to bless my life and, and I can touch somebody else's life and be a blessing, even if it's a smile. Glory to God, if it's an encouraging word, if it's a deed, if I have to buy somebody lunch, if I have to give somebody some gas at the gas station. Something that you can do to be a blessing as a kingdom builder. We're kingdom builders. I keep saying uh, the first of the year, I said we're the real disciples. Uh, we're the real, we're, we're the, we are the real whistleblowers. How about that? We are blowing the whistle loud and we're representing the kingdom of God that we're not going to stop. Glory to God because this is our mission. This is what we must do. Glory to God in this hour we're living. So thank you. Come on in. Come on in. I see. Glory to God. Uh, my brother Jeffrey is in. Uh, I see uh, Pastor Aaron. Good evening. Good evening. Him and Lady J coming in. Thank you all for taking time out to share with me just a few minutes. I won't hold you long because this is such an exciting uh, chapter um, of my life this year. Uh, every year, you know, we have a chapter of life that we go through and uh, just the, the, the preparation time, the preparation time, uh, God gave me this, the ending of 2022, not knowing what was before us in 23. We know we went through a lot of things, 2021, 22. A lot of things were, were, were going through a transition. Souls were being uh, transitioned out of here. People were beginning to be sicker than ever. All type of chaos. People began to lose their houses, their jobs, careers. Everything was in an uproar. So the enemy comes in like a flood. I love that scripture. But the Lord will come in and raise a standard in the midst of all of that that's coming against us. But we have to have enough word inside of us to understand what it takes for us to stand in this evil day. He says, stand and you got to keep standing. Be still and know that I'm God. All of these things come in the word of God. But if we don't apply the word of God, we won't know how to apply it to our lives. So this is why I say to you, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Whatever you hear me, this is none other than Dr. Felice. Felicia, Lord, to God, Pastor Felicia, Miss Felicia, cuz I have, I'm Felicia. Cause when the Lord called my name, you know, it's different. Uh, so many names that, you know, we have other people that have the same name as we do. So when the Lord called our name, I know he got to say it all. You know, Felicia Valerie will tell her it's time to get up. So whatever your name is, the Lord is going to call you by your name when it's time for that next level, when it's time for that next blessing, and when it's time for us to get up out of this earth and go to the eternal glories. So uh, therefore, I want to be in the number with the Lord. I don't need the devil calling my name. I, I get hallelujah. I want the Lord to call my name. As Pastor Paul said, and say, well done, my faithful servant. So I say to you all, please, 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 take your life. Take your life. Glory to God, very seriously. Every time you were awakened, make sure you do something that's good that this day. You know, this is the day the Lord has made. Don't take it for granted. It's your day to do what you want to do. Take it for granted. Lord, I thank you for this day. And what must I do to help kingdom? What must I do to help build your kingdom? What prayer do I need to pray? Good evening, my mama cookie. Blessings on you. 
What must I do to get myself in place in line? We're talking about this alignment. This is you. We ride out with alignment. We're, we're riding out. Glory to God that we are getting ourselves in a preparation mode. We're getting ready to flow. Glory to God in another supernatural level of strength and, and understanding his word to understand that we need to be fasting and praying. Good evening, my Teresa. Blessings on you. We need to be fasting and praying. We need to be consecrating. We need not to be paying so much attention to the news because the news tell us one thing, but then they do another. They said, oh, there's not going to be any rain. We began to travel yesterday. Oh, it's not going to be any rain. It's going to be clear. I was like, well, what, 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 what you said? That, that said, I told my God, son, we were, we were riding. I said, uh, uh, I don't think that's right because it's storm. It's storm. Every time we turn around, the storm stop. Storm stop. All the way when I reached uh, Jacksonville, I was traveling from uh, South Florida. All the way, storm stop. Storm. We had to keep putting on my, my flashes. So I'm saying to you, what they say, they don't know. They don't know. They just know. They just trying to do all type of stuff. God knows. Okay. He is the creator. He's our creator. He's our supreme being. He's our Lord of Lords, our King of Kings. And when we look at and understand that concept, we will stop allowing ourselves to keep fearing that that wants to take us out. Okay? We, we, we're not, we not going to allow ourselves to get in that mode. Not this year. We, we've been through enough. Now let's move forward. So tonight, I won't hold you long. I'm doing part two of the necessity of the Holy Ghost. Part two of the necessity of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God to understand where we are in this hour. There are so many things that are happening. So many flages, camouflages, fake folk out here, all type of demonic atmospheres going on. But one thing about the power of the Holy Ghost is not going to fail God's people because the power of the Holy Spirit was given to us so we would have a, a, a power and anointing to withstand in the evil days everything that will come against us on this earth. There's nothing new under the sun as Ecclesiastic broke it down. There is a time, glory to God, to do all things. And there are some times we're going to smile, we're going to cry, it's going to be born, we're going to die, uh, we're going gonna, we gonna, we gonna, to uh, plant, then we're going to have a harvest. We're going to go through some things in this life. But once you understand who you are and why you're here, you will understand why you must go through this process of this, this situation that is going to always occur. It's like a revolving door. When you go through one thing, okay, you rejoice a minute. Remember in the Bible, all the time, the, the Old Testament, every time they had uh, a battle, they came back and they rejoiced, they had feasts, they celebrated, glory to God. And as soon as they rested, it looked like here come another battle. When they changed kings, they were doing good in one season. They got another king, crazy as all I know. Then it went again. So it, 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 it amazes me why everybody gets so out of place and oh, the Republicans in, in the seat. Oh, the Democrats is doing this. What is the problem since I was a little girl? It has always been to me a problem with poli politicians and what they do, how they do. We've been fighting for years and years and they always do the same things. They don't tell the truth. <laughs> Okay, to get them in the seat. Once they get in the seat, they go, uh, when you say left, right, every which way, but, but the right way. So I'm saying to you, what may be right is not righteous. What is righteous is not right. And once we understand we're in this world, we're not of this world. We're not, yes, to be concerned, to be wise, yeah, to keep ourselves alert, but we're not to get conformed to this world. We're supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Remember the book I had written, Detoxing Your Mind? You have to detox your mind every day. Cast out every vain imagination that exalts itself against the word of God. The, the devil wants to come and make us feel some type of way, even with the meat. Glory to God, all type of stuff they're doing to the meat. They're trying so hard to get us out of here. Then they turn around and gave the farmers bad seeds. Remember I told you all last, uh, I learned uh, from another pastor friend. She said, uh, uh, since they was giving the farmers, selling them bad seeds where the crops wouldn't grow. But again, we that know the word of God, we're going to be all right. Did not Elijah, who yeah, he, Elijah, he was running from Jezebel with her wicked self, he went out there and the raven fell, uh, fed him. However, God going to feed us in the, in, the, in, the, in the wilderness when the children of Egypt, they was out there coming from Egypt, Israelites, what did God do? He had food coming out the sky. Man, that would really trip me out, you know, food falling from up there and then we got so much of it, it's, it's going bad and so much. And they yet complain. So don't complain where you are. It may not feel good. It doesn't look good. But keep your eye on the prize, which is Christ Jesus. 
Keep your eye focused and prepare yourself. Prepare yourself personally for the kingdom of God. We're, we're, we're supposed to be helping build the kingdom. We can't help build the kingdom if we throw it off. We can't help build the kingdom if we don't believe. We can't help, help build the kingdom if we're not empowered by the power of God. People want to be empowered with position. They want to be empowered with money. They want to be empowered with things. They idolize and I, I mean, I, uh, the adultery thing is just going out of whack. I'm just, they just idolize everybody. Oh, we want to be like this one. We want to be like that one. Like what, what happened to being your own original? What happened to using your gifts that God has given you? What about that? Glory to God. So tonight, today, tomorrow, whenever you hear this, please, 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 you are your own original. You need to understand the vital point of your life that you weren't put here to do what you want to do, how you want. That's why the devil don't like you. Because you are doing that that God wants you to, or the, that that He wants you to do. So the devil is trying to blind you where you cannot understand where you're on your way. I'm working on a book now. It's gonna be out in a few few days. I've, I've gotten better with this. I I can do the, the, the dictating and I can just talk. I said, Oh Lord, I'm gonna have lots of books. <laughs> but uh, in essence, I've been uh, broken but chosen. That's the book I'm working on. I broken but chosen. And as I begin to talk about brokenness, I uh, then it led me to. Being chosen, but in, before I could get to being chosen, uh, when you're broken, you end up being blind. Okay, you end up being blinded by the things that are attacking you, by the things that happen in your life that you didn't do nothing to anyone to hurt them, but they always came behind you when you were broken, when you were weak, and then they took advantage of you. So I'm saying to you, this is my heart, this is my desire to win many souls as I can to encourage you all. Please don't give up on yourself. The devil knows who you're gonna be when you were born. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up because the situation don't look good, don't feel good. I don't care who walk off from you as long as the angels, glory to God, the power of the Holy Ghost we're talking about tonight, as long as the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost have the angels protecting you and the power of prayer and praise is keeping your atmosphere charged, you're going to be alright, okay? You're going to be alright, but you got to go through that lonely thing, them, them, them lonely days, those lonely situations you don't understand, you got to go through that to get more uh, closer to the Lord. So on tonight, we're going back to Luke, the 19th chapter, you all that wasn't in last on Monday, Luke 19 chapter, we're going to do two verses of that and we're going to talk again about Acts 19 chapter. We're going to talk about the necessity of the Holy Ghost. The necessity of the... Good evening my cousin Bobby. Blessings on you. Glory to God. I'm back up here with you in South Carolina. Glory to God. We'll, we'll get together on tomorrow. Blessings on you all of you that are coming in. But Luke 19 chapter and Acts 19 chapter. We want to talk to you. I want you to focus because I can, I can get happy and I go to talk real fast. <laughs> So I try to slow it down because I want you to understand the importance of who you are and what, what you need to be understanding. You were, you, were, you were given life to come here to help build God's kingdom. You were given life to be a praise and worshiper to the Lord, not to people. We, we, we acknowledge people in their own right. And, you know, you, we, we respect those that, 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 you know, that have rule over us to a certain extent. Okay, why you say that, Felicia? Because they have rule over us, and if they tell us to go out there and do some crazy stuff, go kill somebody, go jump on somebody, we're not supposed to do that. I don't care what authority they have all over us, we're not supposed to follow any and every voice. Here we go again, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit was given to us, Acts 1 and 8. I'm going to read this to you. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. This is what the Lord had told his disciples to teach mm -hmm, the people. In the upper room, after the Lord left, he descended to heaven. In the upper room, that were they got together and they prayed, they fasted, and the Holy Spirit came down. But see, there's another question that was that that, that uh, the, the the they they argue uh, the Bible scholars that here when Jesus was baptized by John, the Holy Ghost ascended on Jesus then. So some Bible scholars say the Holy Ghost came then when it ascended on Jesus. So when Jesus transformed and came out of the grave, God rose up, took the keys from hell, from Satan. Then he left, glory to God, and took all the saints that were in purgatory, was waiting. He took them back to glory with him. And they are up there now working on our, our, working on our mansions. They're up there working on all of the, getting ready for the new eternal uh, heavens for us. So therefore, those, uh, they, they have a, you know, they, they want to say that the Holy Ghost came then. So the day of Pentecost. They all got together in one accord. And at that point, they said it ascended then because at that point, the cloven tongues came in. They began to speak with other languages. The supernatural, let's go here. When you have the gift of tongues, tongues are actually a language. 
It's not English. If we're, we're English and we're speaking in another language, when you have the gift, glory to God, of speaking in tongues. So if it's not a language, it's not the Holy Ghost. Some people like to fake the Holy Spirit and say that, 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 that's not a language. That's not a language. It has to be words. It's, 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 it's a fluent language and you're praying in the, the Holy Ghost comes upon you, gives you this other language. Okay. And another, maybe we don't know whether it's Africa, whether it's India, there are different languages, so many different uh, languages in the world. And at that point, you're communicating. The Holy Spirit then is endowed you to come inside of you, live in you, and you're speaking this language, glory to God, in the Holy Spirit with God. You've connected now with the Lord himself. Other, there, there are different gifts that God gives us, but one of them is the speaking in tongues. A lot of people don't like to talk about that. They don't want to deal with that. But I say to you, okay, if you don't have the gift of speaking in tongues, then you will still need to have power. The power when you receive the Holy Ghost is going to give you power. And that power is going to give you access to be able to hear the voice of God. Uh, some have discernment. Some have the gift of laying on hands. Some have the gift of faith. There are different gifts in the spirit realm. But if you do not have the Holy Spirit inside of you and have not welcomed this, this move in your life, you will have problems being victorious in this world. And that's why the Holy Spirit gave me on, on, on Sunday night after I had ministered the word about Luke 19 chapter. Jesus said here, 19 chapter, he was talking to the disciples. I want you to go over 19 chapter of Luke 30 and 31. You can read it at a later time. Jesus said, uh, disciples, go and get the coat that's tied. I need, I have need of that coat because it's prophesied to that I got to ride into Jerusalem on that coat. It has to be a coat. I can't be on the donkey. The donkey been used. The donkey is the mother of the coat. So I need to be on the, something new that has not been touched and has not been used. So go and unloose the coat. Tell the men that I need that coat. Did Jesus the Messiah say, I need that coat. And he did so, and, and at that point, because the word already went out in the supernatural realm, the, pe the people of the own, who owned the coat didn't give the disciples no problem. They went right on with him to walk the coat back to Jesus. He said, I have need of that coat, but I need you to go and untie the coat. He's tied up. Unloose it so I can use it for my glory. I, I need it. What are you saying, Felicia? God has need for a lot of you, many of you, hundreds of you, many of you. Glory to God. You hear my voice. He has need of you. If you're doing the will of God, wonderful. If you're not doing the will of God, he needs you. If you're doing the will of God and you got stagnated, he needs you to untie yourself. If you've been doing the will of God and you've gotten slowful, he needs you to loose yourself. If you've been doing the will of God and you're in doubt and you're saying, well, I know I love the Lord. No, you believe. You believe. Now let's go here. Acts the 19th chapter, the first and second verse. They believed in the Lord and the disciples came along teaching glory to God about the power of the Holy Ghost. So many believe in the Lord, but they don't have the power. Here, Timothy, he said, you're, you're, and then this was working toward the, the last day hour which we're in, that you would have the, you know, the zeal, mm -hmm, the act like, you know, the zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. You, you would deny the power thereof. You have a zeal you, you act as though you know, but you really don't know. I heard the other, the, I seen a comment that Ella Tanner said about the word. They believe, but they don't know. He was on the other night. I looked at the message. I go back and listen, look at the comments and, and I said, uh huh, that was a good one. He said, they believe, but they really didn't know. So many, they believe the word. Oh, the word is good. It's, it's like a good book. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's like a good book I'm reading. I believe that these things happen, but I don't know it enough for me for it to happen. I, 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 I see the movie. It's a nice movie. It's a good movie. Oh, it's wonderful. But do you know it enough that you can take on the, the attributes of what's happening in that movie and take it on for your life? You see all of this that's going on, but we're coming to real action getting ready to occur down here. You, you say you know, you go to church religiously, you own every board, mission board, and all this stuff, but you have a bad attitude. You believe because you're like the scribes and the Pharisees. What you mean? The Pharisees, uh, uh, my ex-husband always says, the Pharisees failed to see, and the Sadducees, it was sad to see them coming. They knew everything about the word, but they did not know God for themselves. That's what I'm getting to tonight. I want you to write these notes down. Come on, come on. Understand, if you do not have the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is using you, 
with the gifts that the Holy Spirit come with, those, those are all the attributes that come with the Holy Ghost, then that means that there's something dividing you that you have not loosed yourself to walking to the order, the divine order that God wants us to walk in. We're talking about aligning ourselves. The last few months I've been talking about aligning ourselves. Align yourself. Yeah, align yourself in order to walk holy and to live holy. But if you're not aligning yourself, then that means that you really don't care about the order of your life. You don't really care about the order of your family. You don't care about the order, first of all, your soul, your family, those connected to you. You don't really care. So many people spend a lot of our time and they don't even care about reading their Bible. You, you all that are on here today, how, how, did you read your Bible today? Did you read a word somewhere today? Think about it. Did I have a word today to put the devil in his place? How often do you take time to meditate? How often do you take time to fast? Why am I fasting? Because, because we fast to put the flesh under subjection. We fast to, so we don't operate in the flesh realm that we can hear the Holy Spirit speaking. But now the problem is, if the Holy Spirit is not within us, then at that point, we don't hear you're hearing, but you're not hearing. You're seeing, but you're not seeing. Yeah, because why? You you believe, but you don't know the master. You really don't know the Lord. How can you? Let's go here. How can you, the Bible says, how can you do old wine with new wine? That, that's, that's a natural, natural example. You can't mix the two. If you put the two together, it's going to fuse out of the bottle. What is happening to the church arena? They're mixing good and bad together. They're not praying for repentance. No, we're not perfect. Yeah, but how long are you going to keep having that as an excuse? How long are you going to strive to get up out of it and, and let's just be perfect? How long are we going to strive and keep holding on to things that are tying our soul up? And that's a, it's a whole set of soul, un, unholy soul ties. Well, what's the holy soul tie? That, 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 a soul tie of doing right, soul tie of praying, fasting, glory to God, speaking right, living right. That, that I'm, My soul is tied up to the Holy Ghost and with the Holy Ghost that I want to be in that realm and that level. But here, when you are tied up with all type of other things that are unholy soul ties. When I wrote that word the other day, I said, okay, it's time to back off. It's time to un unattach, detach yourself. I wrote a word this morning. Detach yourself before the things that you are attached to will shorten your life. What are you saying, Felicia? Because I have personal experiences with those that their lives got shortened because of disobedience. I had to watch in much pain because their lives got shortened because the Bible says disobedience will cut your days. I say it all the time. Be careful what you do in this life while you say you up and you got it going on, you healthy, you in your right mind. And the things that you're doing, remember we talked about that last week, the things that you measure, it's going to be measured back to you. What you sow, you're going to reap. But if you feel like it's okay to dog people out, and you say you feel the Holy Ghost. You cannot have the Holy Spirit and do these type of things because the Holy Ghost is a conscious bear. It's going to bear witness, glory to God, with your natural mind, hallelujah, and let you know what you're doing is not holy. So if you're going to flow in unholiness, how can you say you're holy? You're doing things that are not holy, not, not godly, but then you want to put God in when it's convenient for you. Have you ever seen people, they, for, for when it's convenient for them, they turn around and they say, oh, okay, it's good. It's good for me now. Yeah, the Lord knows my heart. The Lord knows this and that. Yeah, but in the midst of it, does he really know? Because if, if the Lord really, you, you really knew the Lord and the Lord knows you, you would not allow yourself to go through such things. Glory to God. You have to understand that without God, we can do nothing. But with God, here, here go to word, come on word. All things are possible with God who, who believe. If you believe, glory to God. If you believe, you'll want to be closer to God. If you believe, you'll want to flow better with God. If you believe, you will want to know him better. But if you don't believe, glory to God, you don't want to get to know him, then we can't even get to the, the, the point of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Because when you feel with God's power, he said, I have come to give you power. Preachers supposed to be flames of fire. Now here we go, here we go. Let me let me move on a little bit here and talk to you. Now, as, as we go on, book Acts, Acts the 19th chapter. Say, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? No, this is the, the question of the disciples. Catch this now. The disciples, when they came up on, they would ask them, they, they said, Have you? Paul asked them, Have you? 
Say, no, we, we heard about the Holy Ghost, but we don't we don't have the Holy Ghost. And he said, really? He said, no, we were baptized about John with water. Oh, okay. So you were baptized with water. Here we go. Here we go. Some say, oh, I'm baptized. I got baptized with water. Catch it. Not with the Holy Ghost. You were baptized with water. Here, I want you to read it for yourself. When you, when you get off later time, I want you to read it. He said, fourth verse, uh, John Baptist baptized with water to repentance. Okay. Then there's one coming behind <laughs> John was Jesus. And he's coming to baptize you with the Holy Ghost power. And the Holy Ghost power is going to help you to live in an evil world. The Holy Ghost power is going to help you override the works of the devil. The Holy Ghost power is going to help you sustain in a mean world. The Holy Ghost power is going to make sure that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The Holy Ghost power is going to give you the authority. You're going to lay hands on yourself and you're going to recover. Glory to the Holy Ghost power. When the doctors say you're not going to live, the Holy Ghost power will say, yes, you speak the word of God. Uh, Romans 4, 17, speak those things that be not as though they were. And it has to shape up and get in line. When you in line with God's word and then you in line with God's power, your attitude will be different. Yes, yes. I, I, I met someone a while back and they had so much word, so much knowledge in the word, but they knew how to just cut up all of a sudden, just just, just say some things that just, just make you feel like somebody small. To make you feel like that you're not in place. To make you feel like you're out of order because you're a woman. And that, that bothered me for a minute. And the Holy Ghost said, Felicia, do I talk to you like that? Do I deal with you like that? Do not allow anyone to manipulate or downplay you by using my word. Because my word is powerful. I come to chastise. I don't come to break down them that are my servants that are serving me and to tell them that they are not doing right. I come. Ah, come on somebody. You got to be careful who you allow in your ear gate. You got to be careful. They could be full of word, but are they full of power? They could be full of a whole lot of stuff, but are they full of God's power? That's the difference. You have to understand in this hour, the devil comes after your anointing. So whatever it takes to break you down and to make you feel like that you're not doing what God wants you to do. Therefore, you got to be real careful. God is not going to tell you stop praying. The Holy Ghost is not going to tell you stop laying before him and supplicating with him. The Holy Ghost is not going to tell you <laughs> don't believe in signs and wonders. The Holy Ghost is not going to tell you that the signs don't, you know, the gifts that do not uh, exist. Oh, yes, they do. The Holy Spirit would not allow you to treat your brothers and sisters to speak to them any kind of way. I, it amazed me how people say, oh, I'm, I'm filled and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a leader. I'm I'm all of this and, and I got all these accolades and I can talk to you like a dog. Where, where does that come from? Jesus never did. He rebuked, but he never shamed people. Even the woman at, with the issue of blood, come on somebody tonight, I'm talking to somebody. Jesus never shamed the woman that had five husbands, five, and the one she had wasn't none of hers. He never shamed her in front of those. He, he waited, first of all, he waited and went where she was when there was no people around. What gives people the right to say that they have a right to condemn you and to put you out and reject you, saying that the Lord told them to do that? They are life from hell. The Holy Ghost does not deal in that order. The Lord said, through love and kindness, that's how I draw my people. I don't draw my people, slapping them, beating them, and hurting them physically, mentally, sexually, uh, financially. I don't come to hurt my people like that. But the devil come to take your life because he come to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Holy Ghost come to build you back up. So let's go here. When I'm broken, and, and then the brokenness leads me to be blind, but because I'm chosen by God, he's going to pick me up, and he's going to pull me out of the muck and the mire, and he's going to do it again for me. And then I'm going to have more wisdom. I'm going to have more knowledge. The Holy Spirit is here to teach us. So if you are operating and doing things that are not of God, and you want to put it on your title and put it on your authority that God has given you, no, you operating in the gifts without the power. Mm -hmm, Holy Ghost. Many have the gifts and they are not walking again, denying the power. They're walking in the gifts. They got happy with the gifts. And that's why Jesus said, when you come before me, I'm going to say, who are you? Who are you? 
You were operating in the spirit of iniquity. You were doing this for your own good. You wasn't doing this for me. When you're doing this for God, the Holy Spirit will lead and direct you and give and that whatever you need, he's going to go left, go right, don't move. He's going to direct you. But if you are not in the Holy Ghost, you can't listen. You're not going to listen to what he's saying. You can have all of that knowledge, all of the degrees, but if you're not Holy Ghost still, it's not going to prosper you in the days for your life of prosperity and protection. Prosperity in the Holy Ghost, not just material things. He'll give you all of that. I always said I've never been a broke child. I've never, I don't, I don't know that type of life. So when I yet knew, my great grandmama told me, you better fear God. Always share with people. And I've always done that down to my lowest when I had no money. I still shared what I had. I would give what I had. I give now what I have. But I had to learn to be wise. Because when all is gone, people are not going to give you like you give to them. But the Holy Ghost, yeah, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, <laughs> he will make a way. Come here, come here, Philippians 4 and 19. He will supply your every need according to his riches and glory. Whatever you need on a daily basis, the Holy Spirit will make sure you have it. He will bless you with somebody you don't know to bless your life. I say to you all on tonight, you're going to need this power. So play, play time is over for real, for real. Play, play time is over. It doesn't matter about who don't like you, but it's a whole lot of people like you. It's hundreds of you all out here. You love me. I've never seen you. We we'll probably will never get to meet you. <laughs> so do you think I care about them that don't like me? Really? Really? <laughs> uh, you have to have some haters because Jesus had Judas. You understand that tonight. Get that in your mind. You're going to have to have some haters. You're going to have to have some doubters. You're going to have to have those that are going to try so hard to divert you from the power of the assignment that God has given to you. You're going to have to have those days of loneliness to understand that God wants to draw you closer to him. He wants you to have his power so you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devils. But if you don't have the power, like they say, they believe, but they haven't been endowed with power. They were baptized with water. Oh, they got it big. I remember you, you go into the water. You got to get baptized. You got to get baptized. Oh, glory to God. You, you, you feel the change. The change that took place when you get the water. I, and I'm like, I got out by this water. I don't, I don't feel no change. I'm just wet right now. And I need to dry off. I, 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 <laughs> but again, I was a child. So, oh, you get, you get, you get, you get, you get, you get filled with the Holy Ghost. No, you're not. No, you're not. You were baptized with water. The baptism of the water was a symbolization that you're getting ready to repent. How many people have been baptized with water and never repented? Number one, have they been taught they need to be repented? Not saying because you're baptized with water, you say, again, they, they don't want to teach it wrong. You have to teach someone and let them know, just like in school, what is this I'm going through? Because we thought we were just getting baptized. We look cute and all that white. We had no clue. Because what? We hadn't been taught. We're in a mold now. Ain't no more religion. We don't need religious. We need salvation. Yeah. We need right teaching to make us understand. So if you've been baptized with water, now ask the Lord to fill you with his holy power. Repent of your sins. Say, Lord, I'm sick of this. Oh, hold on. I, this is why, this is why I, I feel a void. When, you, when you're when not filled with God's power, you're going to feel a void. You're going to feel like something is missing. Some, some, something missing, Lord. I, I still, just, something ain't right. I ain't happy with myself. I ain't sleeping good. I'm standing popping pills. I'm trying to make this pain go away. I'm still having anxiety attacks. I don't understand. And see, some of you have the Holy Ghost, and you're not uh, accessing yourself to walk in your authority. Because what you've been taught or what's been passed on to you make you feel like that you can't have your deliverance. See, when you have the power of the Holy Ghost, so many don't even know how to walk and use the power that God has given you access to. Those that don't have access, I say to you, I suggest to you, ask God to fill you. And you're going to feel the change. Now, the true enough, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, yeah, I spoke in other tongues. And when I got about that flow, that night over in true faith, if I'm not mistaken, it was a Pastor Felton 
She's going on transition with the Lord. Her sons are now preachers. Uh, 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 Pastor Willie Feld and his mama. When I got up off that flow over there in that little sanctified church, I didn't snort another, but I didn't bump another bump, bump of cocaine no more. I, that, that taste was gone. Yes, I woke and then, yes, I got up and I did. I, I, I looked, everything looked new. They say, oh, things will look new. Yeah, it did. Sure did. I got up looking real crazy. Like, wow, what, what just happened? What just happened? So now people don't even have time to tarry. You know, you ain't got to call Jesus Jesus. Back then they made us tarry. We stayed right there till we fell out, but we won't sit right there and call it. We call it till, oh, we, we believe something's going to happen. So many people now, they in a rush to, they, they, church is in a rush. 45 minutes, one hour, one hour, 10 minutes, maybe one hour, 15 minutes. People don't take time to even teach you and let you know. If you're praying, pray your way through. They tell you, go home and pray through. Uh, wow. And you think God is pleased with that? If somebody is praising and, and, and praying through, we're supposed to go there and be able to help them to pray through. Because we don't know what they're facing when they leave there. Many people are living in abusive situations. Many people don't even have food in their refrigerator. And they come to church and at times they're just praising and they pray because they're going through. They don't want to tell nobody, but their prayer and their praise right there, that's what's filling their cup. That they'll be able to deal with whatever situation is going on outside that church, that service. I say to you all on tonight, you're going to need the power of the Holy Ghost. You want to align yourself to be holy? Then you have to take on the attributes, the fruits of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. We're going to talk about this in the next few weeks because there's a necessity that was laid on my heart. We're rushing everything like fast food, but we're missing the power. Now, let me go here. I'm going to close on you. We're going to the 13th verse. Mm -hmm. 13th verse, 19th chapter. Of Acts. Good evening, my sister Dad. 13th verse. The itinerant Jewish exorcists took upon themselves and act like Paul. Because mm -hmm. Pastor Paul was doing the talking to him. And they seen Paul laying hands. They seen Paul praying. They seen Paul, glory to God. Because see, Paul had been filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. See, Paul, you know, going and seeing all kinds of signs and wonders. Even they had aprons and handkerchiefs back then. Yeah, and that's another thing. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Uh-huh. They, they had all the different attributes and they would, the, the, even the, the, the power of the Holy Ghost was so, so heavy and then the anointing that they would give the people, the, the, the handkerchiefs, give the people, catch me, catch me, give the people, hallelujah, the aprons and the, and, and the handkerchiefs to hold on themselves, glory to God, to keep the, the anointing. That was a symbol of the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, yes. So here, he said now, here come these here Jews huh, wanting to play, play. Here we go, play, play people. To act like Paul and Jesus and the devil spoke out and said to them, Jesus, I know. Now, they were finna, they was finna cast out these demons. Let me get you where, where, where we at. They were finna act like Paul and Jesus. <laughs> Trying to show you something. You're going to need the power of the Holy Ghost. For real, for real. They went to go cast out the devils. And the devil said, who are you? We know Jesus. We know Paul. We don't know who you are. So since they had been already exercising in religious spirit, casting out, doing exorcists, again, wasn't in Jesus' name. Because if they were doing exorcists, uh, 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 demonic, casting out demons in Jesus' name, they would have been able to deal with those demons right there. So that let us know they was, they was dealing in another level of some kind of satanic uh, uh, activity. It was not of the power of the Holy Ghost. Because when they decided to lay hands on that devil, <laughs> Guess what the devil did? Y'all can read it for yourself. They don't read it for yourself. Don't say, I said, read it for yourself. After they tried to do that, mm -hmm, the devil, the devils that were possessing the man turned around and turned on them, whooped they behind, whooped them out of their clothes, wounded them, and they went running. Scared, scared. I remember years ago, Bishop Kemp, Bishop Kemp said, I've never seen that move. That, that, he said, I understand the movie of the Exorcist. How, how the demon go, 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 go kill the priest. I don't, see, that's, that's a mockery of the church. I say to you all, for real, for real, we get ready to walk into some, some, some situation where the demonic or warfare is going to get worse. Ha! They're going to try to scare you, going to try to make you want to take the mark, because they're going to act like they got so much power. But you're going to have to know who you really are in God. You have to know God and know who you are in God. Because here, he whooped them up and sent them running. They were playing like they had the power of Jesus and Paul. Let me go here. Go back to the ones. Jesus, uh, Paul, Paul had the, they were laying hands. He was 
asking them, uh, praying, you, 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 you believe, you want to receive the Holy Ghost, but let me lay hands on you. And they begin, they were having, they were uh, uh, receiving the Holy Ghost. We're going back to that time. Once we teach people, get at the altar, not, not stand up at the altar. I see us getting back down. Get on your knee, get your pillow <laughs> and get on down there. Hallelujah. It's time to lay out before the Lord. Hallelujah. Get down there and begin to pray. And if you want to receive the Holy Ghost, you said that elders laid hands and they received because the elders was full of the Holy Ghost. And because we're full of the Holy Ghost, it's a transfer of glory to God. We're touching and agreeing and saying shall it be unto them that believe and want to receive it. All we're doing is touching and agreeing and we're praying, laying hands, receive the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. After you receive the Lord as your Savior, after you repent, come on, let's, let's follow this rule tonight. And then, yes, we're repenting. We're getting baptized with water to repent. We're not getting baptized with water and think that's it. See, people that just get, get let me go here. People that just got baptized with water, that's why they sit there. Somebody put up a post the other day. People on cell phones all in church. All in church. Them mothers back in the day, they would have snatched us and shut up and made us get to the altar. <laughs> yes, they would have. You had to pay attention. You didn't play in church. You didn't do. You didn't. Did, you didn't do this stuff. Again, we've gotten so comfortable with the power of God, with the power of the Holy Ghost is getting ready to fill the churches. Hallelujah! And it's gonna shake some things. Everybody gonna have time to be worried about who was going on outside. They gonna have to worry about their soul. We paying attention. We've got too comfortable with things of the world. Isolating the wrong people because we're feeling like, oh, they heard, they heard that, oh, hey, the Lord ain't real. Oh, you ain't nothing going on there. Oh, we can do what we want to do. Okay, keep it up. Keep it up. The Lord finna shake. He's coming. Before the end of this, we're going to see something. You thought the death, they, they, they hiding from you how many people dying already. They hiding the numbers from you. They going. So I'm saying to you while you alive, you can hear my voice and other prophets, other preachers out here that's teaching for real. You better listen to what we're saying. Get your souls in a place. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. If God fills you with his power, you will want to do more for him. You will not want to be dormant. Just, just, just don't do nothing for God. Don't have no desire. That's a zeal. A zeal uh, denying the power. You deny the Holy Ghost. So that's why you can't walk in signs and wonders. Here. The devils beat them up. And they went running. I remember some years ago, I was dealing with some spirits. And sure enough, it happened like that. I had some sisters over there. They were trying to deal with some demons. They were talking demons too. They over there. And they, one of them turned around and they, they, they spit on her. And I walked up. I said, devil, I command you by the blood of Jesus. Shut up. You want to be delivered? I asked the young, you want to be delivered? No, I ain't ready. Okay, you going to shut up. Peace be still. And you're going to return to your seat. You're not going to spit on me. Because I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. And I walk in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. See, you're going to have to deal with some things. My son said to me, it came back to him. My children came around me for years seeing me pray, deal in the supernatural arena. And he said he told the church, he said, I remember my mom. There was a woman filled with evil spirits. And she had dog spirits. She barked. The spirits in the woman, I never, that was the first time I deal with dog spirits. That was big dogs, little dogs. Seriously, they was roofing like real dogs. Big dogs, little dogs. And it was a perversion spirit. And I had to catch hold because she had opened herself up to all type of demonic activity. Sleeping and laying and having sex with all type of men and women. A perversion. And it messed up and it possessed her. See, people want to play with, oh, it's a mental thing. Everything is not mental. I don't play with the devils. I have a degree dealing with the mentally disabled and mentally dysfunction and dysfunctional. That I have all of that degree, naturally. I know how to deal when it's a mental situation and when it's a demon. People are putting too much on mental situations because they do not want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. They do not want to stop their sinning. They do not want to stop laying and playing. They do not want to stop pimping the people. So therefore, they come up with these diversions and lies. Not so, said the Lord God of hosts. God is not the one to play with. He give us these gifts to protect us and to edify the body of Christ where they could see God. 
inside of us. You got to unattach it. We go back to 19th chapter of Luke. Unattach yourself. Untie yourself from the things that you have no right to be messing with. You have no right with some of these relationships. They're making you do things that are perverted. They're making you do things to your body. They're making you do things that you know are not right. So you've opened the door, but you got to be careful what you open the door for. You're going to have a hell of a time getting up out of the things that you're allowing to possess you. Here, I'm closing. The disciples, they had aprons. I remember back in the day, my great grandma always sent Reverend Ike. Somebody said, oh, prayer cloth. I remember them little red prayer cloth. I said, what that is, Mama, my dear? She said, oh, that's, that's the key prayer. Keep prayer. She would put it in her Bible. She had one in her little purse. She said, oh, that's to keep prayer. Keep, keep, keep blessings coming. I said, okay. Didn't understand that. As time has went on, yes, people have taken the word of God for use of it. They charge for everything. To pray a prayer. <laughs> to sing a song. Everything is a charge. Aprons and handkerchiefs. Read it for yourself. Acts 19 chapter. You never saw the disciples charge anyone for those aprons and those handkerchiefs. You never seen them charge for a bottle of holy oil. My God. And now we live in a time that we're falling for this. Because it's a false evil spirit. It's a spirit of divination. It's a spirit of the Antichrist. He's setting the hypocrites, the scribes and the Pharisees up. Because let me tell you what's going to come. The unsaved going to come and they come and run it with sincerity. The ones that you have, you, you say they have nothing. They've been rejected. They've been lied on. They've been pushed out of the church. They've been hurt. They've been laid up with those that's in the church. They use their bodies because they came weak. And then the devil saw their weaknesses and they gripped on to them. And then they took them to another level of pain and hurt. You can be raped sexually. You can be raped mentally. Physically. Yes. Financially, you can be raped, taken away, violating you, taking away, yeah, taking away something that they have no right to take away. Touching that that they have no right to touch in the name of Jesus. I say to you all, you need the Holy Ghost. Why is it a necessity? So you'll be able to discern right and wrong. Some say, well, they got common sense. Common sense, when you're raised in an atmosphere, you do what you were raised to do. You don't know the difference of culture. You don't know the difference. But you do not come into church and play and act as though this is of God and think there's not going to be a repercussion. That's right, Ella Regina. Be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. In order to hear God's voice, he said, my sheep Know my voice. A stranger, they won't follow. Why is it that our people that say they are sheep, why are you all following strangers and foreigners? Solomon messed up, sleeping with the wrong women. He had all those concubines, all those wives, but greed, lust took over. Because we're in perilous times. Go back to Timothy. We're in perilous times. And it's no longer time to be lax the days of home. I do it when I want to do it. I do what I want to do. God know my heart. God know my... Think about it. I said that to my sister the other day. Think about it. You with somebody that you know God told you not to be with. You wake up and you look in their face and they, they made me lay in their sleep. Ask yourself, do I need to be here with this person? Did God ordain me to be with this person? Did he create me to be with this person? You wonder why your life not going right? You wonder why things are going? And then you, you do this stuff around your children. Then your children come behind, they doing the same stuff. Mm. How long are we going to be caught between two opinions? You either hot or cold. Luke 1, book of Revelation, I spew you out my mouth. 
This is what's getting ready to happen. You're going to see some things that have been playing, playing, repercussion coming. Yeah, warning coming for destruction. God is one. He does not want to hurt his people. He's so loving. Look at Jesus went to the woman with five husbands. Five. By herself at the well. Had a, a talk with her. Not a loud talk. These prophets get on my nerve, my spiritual nerve. Oh, the man you got, the woman you got. Oh, you lie. You say, okay, what you doing? What you doing? They embarrass people in front of everybody. Who are you to do that? Jesus never did that. He warned them quietly. And he let them know your soul is at stake. The woman that was in adultery. Amazed me yet why the man wasn't thrown out in that dirt with that woman in adultery. What, 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 what happened to him? It take two to be in the bed having some relationships. They throw the woman out there. And I want to know who was in the window looking at them to know they was in the room in the first place, in the house. Okay? Throw the woman out there. In the dirt. Jesus went over to the dirt where the woman was. And she was naked. I don't know if somebody throws something around her. And throw her out there like that. In the dirt. Y'all catching me tonight? Ah, Holy Ghost. Somebody been thrown out in the dirt. You've been treated like a nobody. You've been shamed. You've been hurt. They throw you out. Then the church had to say you wasn't good enough. Because when you stopped giving your money and you didn't have the money to give like you once did, all of a sudden you were put on the back burner. Yeah. But Jesus had to talk with the ones standing around. Jesus started writing in the dirt. And I believe, I know he did. He started writing all of them that was all around her. Looking at her. Look at her. It's a mess. Look at her. She done laid up with that man. Look at her. And you done laid up about no her telling how many. <laughs> okay. And Jesus got writing in that dirt. And when he finished, she looked up. He said, woman, where your accusers at? She said, they gone. Jesus said, go and sin no more. This is what the power of love. Oh, I think I need to teach on that. The power of real love. Not the power of rejection. Not the power of shame. When you go through some things, people determine, oh, oh, they done did, they done sinned. No, you sinning. You always want somebody else to be sinning. No, you sinning. I always told my children, uh-uh, don't let people make you feel some type of way. Because them ones that are always pointing fingers, they, do, they got some stuff going on with them. Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. Because they too busy pointing out your sin. How you got tired to worry about somebody that's sin? I have so much stuff going on in my life. I ain't got time. I got too many children. I got to pray for. I got too many grandchildren. I got to pray for. I ain't got time. <laughs> you know what they in this? I have time to teach. Cause, and preach. Because you know when I'm teaching, it's going in the atmosphere. And people hearing me, whether they don't, they're going to probably push the button on me. <laughs> and they're going to go right back. God's going to have them to go right back and listen. She too strict. She too. Well, it was good enough for me. To change my life. It was good enough for me then. It's even greater now. Because he said greater things shall you do. In my name. You all need to take your life. Really seriously. Seriously. I hear with all this other stuff you're dealing with. When the Lord come for you. If you do not have the Holy Spirit. You will not be able. To make it in this earth. You will not make it to heaven. If he come to you, I've seen others be getting shot. They say they dying on the ground saying, get your so-and-so hands off me. Don't touch me. Don't care nothing about where they soul finna go. They not saying, Lord, Lord, have mercy. On the cross, the thief said, one was ignorant, picking on Jesus. The other one had some sense. Say, Lord, this day, remember me in paradise. I say to you all, look at yourself just like that. Thing. Ask God. Please, Lord, don't let me leave here, this world, any kind of way. Let me represent the kingdom. Lord, let, use me. That everybody that you all attach to, you can be a light to win them some type of way. Don't let your life be in vain. Don't let your living be in vain. Don't let nobody take away the gifts that God has designed for you. Nobody is worth your soul. If you're lonely, it's an evil spirit that's lurking after you. Trying to make you fall into the hands of the devils to make you shame. 
Do you see what those that act as though they had power, they have power. They were dealing with demonic forces. The devil does not have all power. So when they went to go cast out the demon in Acts book, I want you to read it, Acts 19 chapter. When they went to go cast out the devil, the devil whooped them up. What are you saying, Felicia? That's why the devil's whooping you up. That's why the devil's defeating you. That's why you can't get back up. Because you don't have the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, you got degrees. You got accolades. You got the name. <laughs> you got the influence. Yeah, you got all the big time friends. But you can't get up and free your mind. Because you're doing things that's not unto God. And God is not pleased. The void is going to be filled when you repent, ask God to save you, ask God to baptize you, yes, with water, that you will repent and be filled with the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. <laughs> old, old school, we call it the Holy Ghost because it's running out the ghost. The Holy is getting rid of the ghosts that come after us to devour us. Holy Spirit is a nice word. It's God's power. It's God's anointing. For the old people, I believe they named it the, they, they, they did it the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, the ghost got to go. Because the holy bring in a different arena. So people will not like you because you're holy. Not because I've been told I'm cold. I've been told I'm rude. I've been told, oh, you're, you're not marriage material, or oh, you don't know how to submit, you need to sit down somewhere, you a woman, you need to stop preaching, you out of order, <laughs> you're too mouthy, you, you're out of the box, I've been saying all kind of stuff, and I'm like, and so, do you wake me up, do you put food on my table, <laughs> do you give me shelter, do you think I care what you say about me, because I'm God's original, you're God's original. Let him bring you to that point to believe in yourself like God believes in you. <laughs> he believes in us. We let him down. That's why he don't know our name. He, he, he knew our name before we were born. But we leave him so that when we need him, a sincere prayer, he will hear. When you're not praying sincerity and they want to play church, that's why ain't nothing happening right. They play in church. I tell people, go into church, you're going to keep going, you're going to keep playing, you don't care about God. That's dangerous. Because you might not have time to really repent. Yeah, seriously. Don't play at this time. I'm going to have another part of this. There's so much of it. I'll be teaching on this in the next few weeks. And I'm going to even pray, glory to God. Uh, we're going to be praying and ask God to fill you, in the, in, 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 fill you with the Holy Ghost right where you're at in your house. Hallelujah. Some of you say, well, our church, they don't, they don't have time to do all that. Okay, well, I take time. And then when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you go to church and you're shouting and you're praising God wherever you, you, you fellowship in. Lord, I thank you. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost and that with a mighty burning fire. I don't feel the way I once felt. I don't look at life the way I once felt. The addiction that I had is gone. The attitude that I have is gone. Oh, I see Jesus. Oh, I see him. I see him in the glory of his power because he's filled me with this joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, I come in with a praise. I come in with a shout. I come in wanting to see what I expect God to to do for me today through this word that I can go out and live a life and let the Lord <laughs> shine on me. This is what the Holy Spirit will do for you all. If you let it. If you let God come in. He will show you a whole new life. Yes, he will. And you will have some humility about yourself. People that don't have humility, I used to wonder, what's, what's wrong? With, what, they say they love the law. What, what is that? Get attitude, don't speak. Want to dare you? What they going to do to you? Going to whoop you? What, really? What, what kind, what, who, who power are you talking about? Mm -mm. I put down the guns. I put down all this stuff. But right now, you know, we need to be back in another time. Or just, you know, we need the artillery to you know, keep ourselves safe. But back in the day, we weren't using it for that. Yeah. It's time. To gird yourself up with the power of the Holy Ghost. Because it's time for us to really help God rebuild the kingdom that's been torn down by these, these naysayers and these falsehood, these false prophets, false preachers out here just dogging people out. They time coming. And you're going to say, Felicia, you was right. When they start falling, 
you're going to see. God said, I'm tired. Tired of using my people. Yes, and they're not inviting them to come to my kingdom. That kingdom come. That will be done. On earth, and that's in us. As it is in heaven. I love you all. And I love souls. Because I could have been gone. I could have died out there in the streets. I could have died in the marriage I was in. I could have died after the marriage I was in. Been through a lot. But I can tell you, Jesus has never left me. And I've never left him. No, wasn't perfect, but I got a whole lot better. When you love God, you will stop allowing yourself with the excuses that you can't get closer to the Lord in this last day hour. Last day hour, now it could be days later. You never know when your day may come and you're not ready. Yeah, stay rapture ready. Stay rapture ready. I love y'all. Blessings on you. Make sure you pray. Make sure you acknowledge God. Make sure you tell God truth. He know the truth, but he waiting on you to tell the truth. He said, a sincere prayer, he will hear. Godly sorrow. When you become godly sorrow, he will hear you. He will redeem you. But the ones that are playing, say, Lord, I'm sorry, go do it again. No. No. Ain't going to pull it. Willfully sinning is different. Go to your Bible. See, if I say you know your scripture, you'll know better. I love y'all. Have a blessed evening. <laughs> Blessings on y'all. See y'all again on Monday. Yes, this is um, this has been in my heart. It's, like I say, I'm not rushing through this. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to teach as the Holy Spirit is giving me to teach you because we have to be in alignment for the greater that God has waiting on us. Yes, you're great. You're awesome. You're the diamond woman. You're the diamond man. You're the millionaire, trillionaire people of God. You're in the royal priesthood. And God will make sure he protects you and make a way out of no way, no matter what comes against you. When you have the power of protection, the Holy Ghost will sustain you. Yes, I love y'all. Good night.